Excellent. Yes, we can. All right. So today's discussion is about remaining flexible with safe. Um, and people say, well, what does that mean? Well, um, there's a lot of people out there who have adopted safe um, and don't really have a fundamental understanding of what they're supposed to be doing. So if you were to, you know, if you were new to the business and you looked at scaled agile site, you would get an indication of how um, things are supposed to be run, how things go. Um, the problem with that is that uh, without a deep understanding of the fundamentals and principles that SAFE is built on, um, you're, you're going to get a false impression and it's going to lead to something where you're dogmatic about what you are reading, uh, what you see on the site, you know, what you might have heard, instead of really understanding the fundamentals and allowing yourself to be flexible in your context. So that's the secret is flexibility within your context. So let's get the uh, discussion started. Framework, right? So he here's a definition for framework. SAFE is a framework, there are other frameworks out there, but basically we're talking about a conceptual structure of ideas, right? These are concepts. These are not rules. These are not playbooks. These are not, you know, steps that you go through to, uh, for success. So that's, that's the biggest, um, you know, definition difference, I guess I would say that uh, we're looking at today. All right, so we've all seen the big picture before. And um, let me see, is my, um, are you guys seeing my whole presentation or is there a window on the side here? No, we see the whole presentation. Okay, all excellent. Good. All right, just wanna make sure. Um, so, you know, again, there's two options here. You can look at this stuff and, and see it as um, a set of rules, a set of uh, very rigid um, processes to follow or you can understand what the real fundamentals are and look at the implementation roadmap as a guide and not a manual, right? So that's, that's the key idea is to use these things for your context and absorb what makes sense. So let's look at the implementation plan. So, you know, some anti-patterns you might be looking at, uh, you probably have seen before is, you know, when a art is launched is that someone sets a date without really understanding what's involved. Um, as I'm sure most of you know, when an art is launched, um, there's a lot of preparation um, involved. And if you don't understand what, you know, those complications are, you can go ahead and set a launch and then, you know, you're kind of setting yourself up for not as much success as you would if you uh, really understood uh, what was involved. Um, the other thing is, you know, this is really about a team effort, um, not one person's idea on how, how to execute a plan. Um, and, you know, don't approach safe like a toggle switch, you know, safe is something that you should embrace, um, the fundamentals in your context, um, but it's not something that you turn off when it's inconvenient, right? Um, that's not a path to agility. Um, you know, it, it's something that you need to have in your mind at all times. Um, art roles are based on management hierarchy. So I'm sure many of you have seen this in the past, you know, the project manager becomes the RTE and um, you know, and the program manager becomes the, the uh, product manager and um, those roles, you know, that it's not really, those people might not be the right people for those roles. And um, so, you know, don't be thinking about hierarchy, be thinking about who's best to fill those roles. Um, and playbook, right? Some people, you know, some companies develop a playbook, you know, a set of rules and processes that they go through to implement safe. And that's not really what you should have in mind. It should be that interpretation that's best for your context, right? So um, be ready, you know, some of the more uh, lean agile um, kind of mindset things that you wanna be looking at is be ready to respond to change over a plan. So, you know, that the, the idea is, um, you know, value that responding to change over a plan because, you know, you know, change is gonna happen. Um, let's make sure that we're addressing it um, and instead of dogmatically sticking to a plan. Again, I mentioned it takes a village, you know, those, uh, a lot of people um, are required to make this thing work. If you leave it to the RTE and a couple of others, um, you're not gonna have as much success. Uh, alignment before the launch. So, um, you know, there, I think one of the things that's understated when you go into PI planning or when you go into an art launch is understanding what the 
vision is, understanding what the backlog looks like, applying the vision to the backlog so that you have you know, a good set of uh, features that you want to bring into the, to the first PI and creating that alignment so that everybody's on the same page. Um, that is something that needs to be prepared well before a launch, well before a PI. Um, and so it's important. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, we're safe. I, I spoke to someone on our team the other day um, when they were saying, hey, safe says, I said, wait, let's talk about what we need. And then we'll talk about what the best answer is. So um, try to, you know, um, avoid saying we're safe or, or let's do what safe matters. And um, of course, I uh, mentioned context, right? So context is, um, is a big thing that uh, really helps you translate. So, um, all right, so for the art launch, um, again, some Andy patterns is that, you know, we spoke about this, that it all falls on one person, that the launch, you know, um, that you try to do this without any experience. If you have SPCs available, make, make use of them. It's gonna help you avoid some pitfalls that you might not otherwise anticipate. Um, build the backlog in a bubble. So I, I think we spoke about that, you know, you need alignment and it's important to do it that way. Um, architecture, uh, kind of the same concept, you know, let's make sure the architect's working with the rest of the team. And, you know, that involvement, that lean agile leadership involvement that they're engaged and they, um, you know, that those folks don't show up just for PI planning. All right, so kinds of things that we can do to, you know, be more lean agile mindset, be flexible would be to prepare everyone who's involved, you know, make sure they're trained, make sure they understand their role. Um, toolkits, you know, use those, but uh, it's not, you know, don't use them and then never look at them again. I think toolkits and preparation are things that are gonna be iteratively needed um, over time and, and uh, so, keep that continuous improvement mindset. Um, find a guide that has done this before. Of course, we talked about SPCs, you know, um, it, it's best to use that kind of um, uh, knowledge and experience for your benefit. And um, Gemba walks, you know, we all know what Gemba walks are, go out, see where the work is being done, you know, kind of get a feel for what's happening with the art, understand things. Uh, we spoke about backlog features. And the other thing is to prioritize your work using an economic uh, model so that um, you know, you're making good decisions. So, uh, Savan, let me know how we're doing on time. Uh, maybe give me a two minute warning if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Well, good. All right. Uh, trains of teams and, and you know, train them and, and launch the art. So um, some anti-patterns you can fall into if you're not careful is you don't train all the teams. You know, maybe there's a reason for economics or or uh, just logistics that you're not able to train everybody, you know, that understand that that's going to create some problems because you're going to have people showing up for, uh, you know, their first PI planning, not understanding what the role is, not understanding what uh, is happening and, and it's, you know, can be disruptive. Um, remote, you know, uh, I, it was good to see most people using their video today. There's so much more that you can get out of seeing someone's face in a video than just hearing their voice occasionally. Um, so uh, that, that's highly encouraged. Um, letting people say no when it matters, right? If someone's uncomfortable with something that's pushing forward or a risk or a dependency, uh, let's talk about it. You know, no is, is fine. Let's find out why and see if there's a better answer. Um, training of uh, essential personnel and managers only. Well, you know, Again, everyone needs to be trained. Uh, if it's just the managers, it's not really going to, to really uh, engage everybody in the team. Um, product owners and scrum masters aren't the only ones who should be at PI planning, obviously. The whole Agile team should be. Um, and that business engagement, um, we really need lean Agile leadership there. Um, it's important for the continued success of the art. So let's make sure they're there. And a conference call um, with a few people in the room is, you know, is kind of the same idea. That's not going to get you where you want to be. So some more traditional, uh, sorry, some more lean agile mindset, some flexible ideas would be, you know, everyone has to be involved. Um, that has something to do with the, with the art and uh, maybe even some suppliers, right? Um, questions get to problems and that 
creates discussion and that solves problems. So encourage people to raise their hand and, and share concerns. Um, once you get that dynamic going, it's, it's gold. Uh, and so encourage it. Um, so, you know, sometimes you're required to compromise, right? And um, the thing is, if you keep the values and principles in mind, this is what I was saying about being flexible, but understanding the underlying principles and values of SAFE, if you keep those in mind, it'll allow you to make choices where you may not be able to implement the framework as it's described, but you may be able to get close. Uh, but it's important to understand what the objectives are so that you make some good choices. Um, obviously, the plan will change, so you have to be ready for that. And, um, you know, as RTE, um, I'm sure you guys have done this, but make sure you're reaching out to the teams and engaging them so that, you know, we're in a situation where, you know, there's always quiet people on a team, but generally they have very good ideas. Pull that out of them a little bit, tease them, say, hey, you know, Sally, what do you think? And oftentimes you'll get some great ideas. So, um, you know, there are some people who will speak and without any prodding, but uh, some others, you know, need a little bit of encouragement um, and make sure that, you know, through training, everybody knows what to expect. All right. So as far as coaching the arts concerned, um, some anti-patterns you can get into is, you know, management makes all the decisions. That's that traditional uh, command and control kind of mindset that uh, some management people still have. And that's not helpful, right? Because you're not engaging, you're not empowering the team. Um, certification means you can coach. Well, yeah, unfortunately that's not true. I wish it was, <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there with certifications and uh, doesn't mean they're a good coach. Um, you know, being a good coach involves a lot of things, um, not just the certification. As well, you know, for SBCs, um, SBCs are important to have, but, you know, they're not the be all and end all of things. You want to make sure that you are engaging your team. Um, let's see. Uh, so one other thing that sometimes you run into is you have challenges um, and that that discourages people from taking on those challenges, but you have to be courageous, right? You have to be able to um, address those challenges, uh, not too many all at once, but once in a while. Um, collaboration um, is, is, you know, important. And I often say, well, you know, what's the cost of not collaborating? Uh, so that's uh, an important part too. The RTE is boss. Well, I'd like to think so, but that's not really the case. Um, I, I think the, the point here is that, um, the RTE is a servant leader um, and has to remain in that stance. Um, and that, you know, we need, um, we need everybody to be able to speak to the customers and stakeholders to understand um, the, uh, uh, the, the customer's wants and needs. So, so Van, how are we doing on time? Uh, we're doing good. We have about five more minutes before we start with the Q&A. Okay, cool. I think we'll work out fine then. Um, so some traditional mindsets we just spoke about, but some more flexible, uh, lean agile mindsets that we re really want to be focused on is, you know, let's make sure that the plan's important, but it's not set in stone that we position ourselves to be able to adjust. Um, objectives are the mission, right? Objectives are those things that, that business language that helps describe what the, the business owner really needs from us. And those are the guiding principles. As we break those down into features and enablers and, and user stories even, um, you know, you can lose that focus, but, you know, always remind the team of what those objectives are so that we're staying on mission. Um, optimize for flow, you know, think of it, um, you know, always think of system thinking and uh, be looking for those bottlenecks. Um, it's important to address those. And um, stay connected with various meetings, art syncs maybe, um, at least PO syncs and scrum of scrums. Um, another thing that can keep you um, flexible is demoing, right? Make sure that you're demoing, you know, that's that real proof of what we're achieving. Make sure you're demoing to the customers um, throughout the PI. And, um, you know, if you're collecting matrix, you should be collecting uh, metrics, sorry. 
those metrics should be value-based. They should not be vanity metrics. So it's not about how many features did we finish. It's not about how many bugs did we fix. Those are all fine and, and useful. Um, but what we really want to focus on is those values. How are we, uh, uh, you know, um, obtaining the value to the customer and how are we achieving the uh, objectives that we're after um, and continuous improvement um, you know is all about exploration um, and it's important to be continuing to do that over and over again all right so uh, as you go to launching more arts um, one of the things you have to be careful of is that you don't get into a situation where you're trying to use the same formula for every art. That's not the way things work, right? When you launch one art, there's a context and you did things for that context that makes sense. The context for another art may be totally different. They don't have to look the same. If you try to use a recipe and repeat that recipe, you're not gonna be successful because you're, the idea is to understand the challenges for the new art and to address them um, with some values in mind. So, um, you know, it's important to be flexible in that way. Um, communities of practice are a good thing, um, you know, because the faster as RTE, you can disseminate the knowledge that you need throughout your team, the better off um, you'll be because those people will now be empowered and you won't feel like you have to be everywhere at once. Uh, I know I felt that way uh, launching our, our art for the first time. Um, but eventually the team started to do things and I just kind of stood back and enjoyed the show. Um, you know, it's important to make sure that you're disseminating that, disseminating that information to them and that you're empowering them. Um, also, you know, a good thing is to look at variability, uh, understand that there's going to be risk and change and make sure that you're preserving options that you haven't locked yourself into one answer. Um, that's going to, you know, bite you uh, later on. Um, the other thing is to, you know, invest in each of your arts um, as you did the first one. It's not, oh, we did one already. This should be a piece of cake. It's not about that, right? It's, it's about understanding the needs of the current art um, that you're working on. All right, so acceleration. I'll quickly go through this. I think we probably have maybe a minute left, Savan. Yeah, two minutes. You're, you're All right, good. cool. All right, so... Um, basically, as you move forward, right, resist that playbook. Um, you know, a lot of traditionally mindset people say, oh, you guys did a great job with that. Tell me, you know, let's document what happened so that we can just recreate that with every art that we launch. It doesn't work that way. Um, you know, it, it's, it's important to make sure that um, you, you are addressing, you know, um, I keep saying this, but addressing the, the context of each art separately. Um, the, some other uh, more uh, lean agile mindsets that are good to focus on at this point are focusing that, are fostering that culture of a relentless improvement. Um, it's important to keep that going, you know, through INAs and retros and good improvement items uh, coming into the uh, backlog after those. And one of the things that um, I know we focused on initially was creating that psychologically safe environment where people felt comfortable being transparent because transparency leads to discussion, right? And that helps you solve problems that you may not even recognize are there. Um, it's very powerful. So the faster you can create that psychologically safe environment, the better off you're gonna be. Again, invest in your people to empower them, you know, train them, make them feel comfortable, um, you know, help them, you know, decentralize that decision-making, make them feel like they're autonomous as much as they can be and, um, you know, grow them. Um, and also, you know, relationships, right? Make sure that you're developing your relationships with the team, that they're connecting, because that's really where the power is gonna become um, for the team later on. So. I think I tried to get through that within the time frame.